going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. And in this video, we're gonna do a follow along stretching routine that is good for both baseball and softball players. My rec recommendation before we get into the stretches is that this is done at least two days a week. Three days is optimal and to do it in between each of your resistance training workouts or at the end of a res resistance training workout. Do not do this before any kind of weight workout. Stretching in itself actually tires the muscle out. So we wanna do that at the end of a workout or on an off workout day. So what you'll need for this workout, pretty simple, yoga mat, two yoga blocks, one but two helps in some of the things in the stretches. These ones not so much, but uh, at least one yoga block and a yoga strap. If you, don't, if you can't get a yoga strap, and you can search those exact keywords on Amazon and they'll come up. The reason, if you don't have the strap, you can use a beach towel or a body bath towel. So just a longer towel that you can use, you can wrap around your foot. Now, before we get into the stretching, make sure you do kind of a light warm up. Recommend maybe 10 front lunges or back lunges, reverse lunges, each leg. And you can put a twist in there where you twist across the front leg. Also do some lunges, some side lunges, 10 each direction and also some slides. We call this where slides, if you can see this on the video, where we actually make the toes go out. We point the toes out, we lunge to one side, and then we slide our butt across the floor to the other side. Don't let your butt come up and then down. So those are my three kind of light recommended stretching, uh, work dynamic movement work before you actually get into the stretching itself. Now let's get into the exercises themselves. Oh, before we get to those, I will kind of give you some cues to keep in mind while doing the stretch. And then at the end, the way you can follow along with this is I would do the, the quick cues and then I will say how long you're going to hold the stretch for. And then I will say, go ahead and pause the video right now. And then when you're done with that time, say if it's a minute and a half, you have to hold a stretch, then you can unpause and then I'll go into the next exercise. Let's get into the stretches. The first one we're going to do is wrist mobilization. So I'm going to make sure you guys can see this, get enough light here. There we go. So what you're going to do is we're going to sit in a position like a, a quad, quadruped position where the hands, the wrists can be under the shoulders and the knees are going to be somewhat under the hips. And the first one is palms down, middle finger pointing straight ahead. And we're going to keep the heel of the palm on the ground as we shift forward and we're gonna push just like this and we're gonna do this 10 times. You're just gonna rock, we call these wrist rocks. So you're just gonna rock 10 times. I'm not gonna go through all these, but that would be the first one. You wanna shake it out. You wanna do this with really any of the stretches that we do. Shake it out because we wanna get the fluids going back through the joint again. When you stretch, it pushes it all out. It kind of wrings it out like a sponge, like you wring out all the water. And we wanna make sure we get that that fluid back in there, so that's why we shake it out a little bit. Next one's gonna be palms down, middle finger pointing right at you. Same idea, we wanna keep the heel of the palm down, keep the elbow straight. On the last one, we wanna do that too. Keep the elbow straight, and we're just going to rock backwards now. So we're gonna feel the stretch on the underside of the belly side of the forearm. So we're gonna do 10 rocks this way too. Okay, you get those 10 rocks in, you're gonna shake it out, and then we're gonna go palms up, middle fingers pointing straight at you if we can, splay the fingers out, elbows tight, and the other thing I try and do is keep kind of the, the middle of the top of the forearm and pointing straight ahead. So if, it's, if the middle finger is not, you're not able to point it straight at you, while keeping that straight ahead, I would focus more on the front part of the wrist, and we're just going to stay there and then we're going to rock backwards. Okay, keeping those elbows straight, we're going to rock backwards 10 times. So these ones are all numbered. I'm going to shake it out and then we're going to get into more of the time stretching, which I'll let you know how much we stretch on the next one. Okay, this is seated single calf. We're going to sit on the calf. Uh, this is going to stretch your Achilles tendon in, in the, the lower calf area. And so with this one, we're going to kick the leg back behind us, almost like a kickstand. We're not really worried about this leg here. It's this right here, the foot that's underneath that we're worried about. A couple things. We want to sit on top of 
feel like you're sitting on top of the front of the ankle, pushing down, and we're gonna have a slight raise of the heel. So we want the heel to be slightly above the ground so we can apply some pressure there. The other thing we wanna make sure we're doing is this, this knee is tracking in line with the toes. Don't let the knee come out this way or don't let it come in. Make sure it's tracking right over the toe. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit right on that calf. You probably won't feel it within the first 10, 15 seconds, but as you kind of get past the halfway mark, the 45 seconds, we're gonna hold this stretch on each leg, each ankle for a minute and a half. When you get about halfway, you'll start to feel that that hamstring's really starting to stretch out. So again, we're holding a stretch for a minute and a half on each ankle. Okay, with this one, give you a good view. Uh, this is called, called seated seiza. We want to curl the toes underneath us, and then we want to keep the heels together. You may need to use your hands to push them together, but we don't want the heels to bow out while we're sitting. But we're going to sit on our heels, again, toes curled under, heels pushed together, and if we can, try and keep these knees together too, don't have them flare out to try and keep them there. Keep everything nice and tight, and we're gonna sit here for another minute and a half. So you've done a minute and a half calf stretch on both calves, and we're gonna do a minute and a half where we're gonna stretch out the toes, and you're gonna feel that in that arch there in the big toe, as again, you get past the halfway mark, 45 minutes, you're gonna feel it burn in, or you can feel the stretching going on. So with that, minute and a half hold, pause video, and then we'll start on the next one. Okay, so this one is called Pigeon Pose. So, get my arm out of the way here. What we wanna try and do, the setup for this is a little tricky. We wanna make sure that we're creating somewhat of a 90 degree angle here with the knee. And what I try and do is I'll take my foot, make sure you got padding underneath here. If you feel like the bones are hurting on the foot, we're either gonna double up our mat, or we're gonna place a blanket or something to pad the bones of the foot in here. We don't wanna feel pain in the, in the bones of the foot. Those are small bones, we don't wanna hurt those. Um, but we wanna make sure that this foot kind of stays in line with the sternum. We don't want it to be out, we don't want the hip, we don't wanna be down in this version of pigeon. We want the actual knee to be off the ground and we're gonna, we can use our hands flat or if your arms start to get tired, we can go into fist down. But we wanna try and stay tall here. The leg behind us gets pushed back as far as you can and extended as far behind you as you can. You don't wanna have it close to this foot, you wanna actually create some pressure there. And this is, you're gonna feel this on the outside part of the glute out here. <clears throat> and we're gonna hold each leg, each side, we're gonna hold this for one minute, a minute and a half each side. So you can either do a minute and a half or two minutes on this one. Two minutes probably would be good because a lot of times this part of the body, the glute, is really tight. So if you need a, uh, two minutes, then hold it two minutes on each side. But a minute and a half, pause the video, and we'll go to the next one. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the hips. So we're gonna do three different versions of frog pose, and I'll let you know how long we're gonna hold each. This one, this one we're gonna hold for a minute and a half. This version of frog pose, and what I like to do is I like to lay my mat this way so that I have cushioning on my knees <clears throat> instead of lengthwise. So we're gonna spread the knees out as far as we can, like we're doing a pancake, but, but with our knees bent. So on this version of frog, we're going to lay down. You might not be able to see my upper body here, but I want you to see my legs at least. So I'm gonna rest my belly, my chest, my arms on the ground, so you shouldn't be tensed or anything, uh, arching lower back or any, any weird thing like that on this one. We should be nice and relaxed on the upper half. We're gonna put our, the soles of our feet together. You can see that. And then I'm gonna push my feet down for a minute and a half. So we're just gonna kinda of sit and hang out here, and the whole minute and a half, we're pushing our feet down towards the ground. They're together, and we're pushing them straight down. So again, minute and a half, pause the video, and we'll move to the next one. All right, so this is the normal frog pose that most of you have done yoga or used to. We're gonna spread the, the knees out, just like we did on the last one. And if you need to, you can take your hands and help to kind of spread out. But this time, what we're gonna do different is we're gonna straighten, we're gonna have a 90 degree bend at the knee, but we're gonna straighten our leg a little bit from the last exercise. We want the heel, or the ankle, right under the knee on this one, both sides. Okay, you're not gonna be able to see this other side. But we're gonna go right in line with the knee. Now this one, we're gonna go on our forearms, so your 
your belly, chest should be off the ground. We should be on our forearms. And we're gonna actively pull our knees apart in this. So you're gonna activate the muscles out here. And then we're gonna push our hips back. In my case, back towards the window. So this stretch we're gonna hold for two minutes. And this one, you got, this one is a tough one. You gotta be careful when you come out of it after two minutes, go really slow. Again, when, when we get into a stretch like this for two minutes, it's like wringing the, the water out of a sponge and you have to come out of it really slow so we can allow that liquid, that fluid to come back into the joint and lubricate the joint. And then you might wanna have to shake this one out just a little bit. All these you probably should be shaking them out, but we wanna make sure you, you come out of it slow. So you're, you're widening your knees, you're pulling your knees apart in this stretch and you're pushing your hips back. You got two minutes on this one, pause the video and we'll get to the next exercise. Okay, so next one, Next one is frog rocks. So same position as the last one where we're widening out the knees. We got the heels or ankles underneath the knee in line with the knee. And on this one, we're actually gonna be tall on our arms, arms locked out, elbows locked out. And we're going to push back and rock back. And when you kind of hit the wall, then you come forward. And then we're gonna slowly rock back and come forward. So this one's a timed one. We're gonna do this one for about a minute and a half. We're not really counting the rocks, but we're being really nice with the rocks. Don't grind, no hip grinding here. Just put, push back to where you start to feel that little bit of that stretch, big time stretch, and then you're gonna rock out of it, release, and then come back. So again, you're gonna do this for about a minute and a half, and you can pause the video and we'll move to the next one. Okay, so now we're gonna go into a standing pancake which means we're gonna, we're gonna move the feet apart from each other. We're gonna have the toes straight ahead. That's important, don't let the toes flare out. We want the toes straight ahead here and we wanna lock the knees out. Just like when we were doing our wrist rocks, we wanted the elbows locked out, we want the knees locked out. So feel like you're pushing the backs of your, your knees behind you. You can do one of a couple, oh, the other thing is we want the hips to be over the ankles. Don't push the hips behind the ankles. We want the hips floating over the ankles in this one. And we can do one of two things. We can either grab our legs and pull while locking the knees out. We can pull our body down. We can hang. So everybody out there is gonna have different flexibilities here. So we can use just the weight of our body, our upper body to hang into this. And that, and that is effective because over time, over the two minutes you're gonna be doing this, you're gonna find yourself actually getting closer to the ground as you're breathing. Make sure you're breathing on all these stretches. You're nice deep breathing. Don't be labored with your breath. But we're just gonna hang, or we could grab a weight. This is a, a weighted bar, I think it's 10 pounds. You can grab a five pound plate. And what you're gonna do, don't drop it on the ground if you're that flexible to be able to do that. Hold it up like you're holding a steering wheel or hold the weight up this way to just add some extra weight. We call it weighted mobility so that it helps to get us deeper into the stretch without us really having to do too much work. We just let the weight do the work. So this is a standing pancake, and we're doing this for two minutes. You can pause the video, and we'll move to the next one. Okay, so this is a standing single leg forward fold, or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, this one, this is where we're gonna need our block. We're going to lift our toes, heels on the ground, Back leg is just like a kickstand, it's just kind of behind us to create some base. And we can do a couple things here. Uh, one thing, making sure that we got the knee straight, pushing the back of the knee behind us, straight during this whole thing. We're gonna do a minute and a half each leg on this one. We can, we can use weighted mobility. We can have, use the aid of a weight to just kind of hang and let us go. We can just hang like this, or we can grab the leg and we can pull this way, what I like to do is pull towards around my knee to try and bend it, and then, and then it gives me a, a signal to really push against that, so I have to keep my knee straight. So that's kind of a good idea too, is to just pull around, somewhere around the bend of the knee or the, the calf area to where it's gonna help bend the knee, and so then you have to push back against that to keep the knee straight. So each one of these, you're gonna do both legs, minute and a half, pop after you're done with that, uh, or pause the video, and after you're done with that, we'll move to the next one. All right, we're gonna do the seated pancake series. We just finished, um, we, or one stretch before, we did the standing pancake. So the seated pancake is this way. So we're spreading out. Usually what I like to do is use one hand behind me, one hand in front, 
and try and see if I can sit myself a little bit more straight with the legs. And so what we're going to do here, we're going to do a series of four or five different ones. We're going to have a little bit of a break towards the last one, but there's three or four that we're going to do back to back to back time-wise. Uh, some of them are counting, and then the last one I think is a time-wise one. Uh, this one, the first one and the last one are time. So this is where we get to use our strap or our towel. And if we're using a towel, we just kind of wrap it around our foot and hold it this way. And what we're going to try and do is bring this shoulder, the inside shoulder, inside the leg. Now the big thing is, again, we want to push this knee into the ground, the back of the knee into the ground while we're doing this. So with the strap, it would look something like this. I would grab with my uh, left arm, I would take, and I would try and push this inside shoulder inside the leg, and I would keep pushing both knees, the backs of both knees, in the ground, and I'm just going to hold this position, and if you need to, you'll start feeling like you're getting into the stretch more, deeper in, and it'll start to loosen up, and then you can kind of try and tighten it down a little bit more. But you're going to be a minute and a half on each side, minute and a half this way, minute and a half, same thing, reverse in order this side, you're going to be more like this, Make sure, making sure again you're pushing the backs of the knees into the ground. That one's the time one. Then we're going to do walks, which is you're going to start here, keeping the backs and knees pushed down. We're going to walk across to the other side, and that's one. And then we're going to walk across. That's two. And we're going to count all the way to ten with walks. Then you'll end up over here on this side at the end on ten. And now we're going to do bounces. Bounces are bounce. It's not just body's moving this way and we're just kind of chopping. We want to actually bounce into the leg. Bounce. Not too hard, but bounce into the leg. All the way to one side. So that's one. And we bounce. Bounce. Two. Again, pushing the back to the knee into the ground. So ten of those. And then we're going to do ten sweeps where we're going to be starting on this side. We're going to sweep across. That's one. We're going to sweep across, keeping the chest low. Two, don't come up. Keep the chest low. Three, and we're going to keep the chest low. Four, okay? So after you get 10 of those, you might have to come out of this a little bit, shake it out. Okay, I'm, I've been in it too long, so I'm going to go to the next one. Um, and then what you can do, one of three things on this next one. We're just going to hang out in pancake. This is going to be a time one for a minute to a minute and a half. It's up to you, however long you want to do it. But we're going to start this way, pushing the backs of the knees into the ground. You're going to hang. And then maybe at 40 seconds, if you're doing a minute, then you can make it a little tougher and go out here and hold for the last 20. Or if you want to make it really tough, then you can take your weighted bar or plate or whatever and then hold it to different degrees out in front, and that's going to help you get deeper into the stretch. So that's the seated pancake series. Now, pause the video, and then we'll move to the next one. Or you can pause the video in between each that I showed, and then I'll show the next one. You can do it that way, too. But we've seen the next one. Okay, so this is the couch stretch, and it is a little tricky to get into. But what we want to do is you're going to get your <clears throat> yoga mat, and you're going to put it up the wall to pad your foot. Um, I'm going to leave my right foot on the wall, and I'm going to pick my left knee up. And so what we want to make sure is that this foot stays vertical and doesn't start to drift inside towards the butt. <clears throat> now this is where your, your yoga blocks, two yoga blocks are going to come in handy here because you're going to flip them up and use them to be able to get into more of an upright position with this. So the knee is pushed into the corner of the wall and from here we're going to try and squeeze our, our whatever butt cheek is back. So in this case my right one. I'm going to squeeze the right butt cheek and start to try and pull the butt away, the right glute away from the right heel. I'm going to try and sit into kind of my hip, my back hip, right hip. And I'm going to hold this for one and a half minutes each leg. This is the couch stretch. Again, knee in the corner. we got the, the back foot is vertical. doesn't start to drift inside towards the other leg. We want to <clears throat> use our yoga blocks here to help us be upright. Squeeze the right butt cheek or whatever leg is down, and we're going to hold the stretch for a minute and a half, both legs.